Sarah Hobad, we hear from Horse Racing Nation, pleased to be joined by not one, but two Canterbury Park experts to talk about the Pick 5 carryover pool that is going into Saturday's race card. Welcome to Kevin Gorg and Angela Herman, and thank you both for taking the time to chat about what is going to be a huge pool for Saturday racing, and there's some stakes action in there as well. Yes, hello. Thanks for having us. We've got a couple of Minnesota breads to talk about, a lot of Minnesota breads. No, it's, a, it's such a big card because we host a big concert called the Twin Cities Summer Jam. Carrie Underwood last year, Blake Shelton this year, racing after this weekend for 10 days. And so this weekend is kind of empty the barns, fill up these races with giant fields, and the timing couldn't have been better. We saw a couple of crazy long shots last night. And so not only do we have a carryover uh, of around $60,000 into this pick five, we've got that 10% takeout, and being kind of at – that five o'clock central time, six o'clock Eastern on the horse racing landscape tomorrow before Del Mar opens up next week. And on the heels of Sarah, uh, we feel like tomorrow night be three, four, five hundred thousand dollars bet into this, this pick five. And so it's exciting. Uh, we're looking forward to it. And, and like there's some minutes, which only intensifies the fun. Definitely. And this is like the perfect timing to get a bankroll building for the rest of the Saratoga meet. Del Mar is coming up. It's all the great summer racing. And then, like you said, you guys are taking a little bit of a break. So this is the time to strike with these races. And we start off with a stakes race for three-year-old fillies, Minnesota breads going six furlongs on the dirt. And the first thing that I look at is always the buyer par. And so my eyes are immediately drawn to brew house who broke her maiden last time out. And that 69 figure really jumps off the page in a group like this, where the average key figure was a 63. Now that was on debut. She got an easy lead, but she was never really asked. And I just saw from the replay, some of my favorite things, the ears going back and forth, really geared down and not really pushed to the maximum in the end. And I think that she could be dangerous in here if she's able to replicate that figure. But of the Mac Robertson quartet, there's a couple others coming out for him. Um, and she's likely to face a little bit of pace pressure this time around with it's her time. Uh, she's my warrior as well. So this is, I feel like, going to be a decent test to see what she's really made of. So I wanted to use her. It's her time. And then I feel like I'm covering all my bases with Gypsy Reward as well in case there's a little bit of pace on early. But how do you guys see the sequence? Kevin. <laughs> Kevin's frozen. I think you've got <laughs> oh, the no. right horses there, Sarah. I, I think Gypsy Reward certainly is going to get a uh, brew house to be there. Uh, it's her time. I like. And I think the other horse that I'm going to add is the five. She's my warrior. Uh, she's been there and done salty competition in the couple of years we've been last time out she faced lady goldstar and clickbait who are just at our track clickbait's been a monster for a while looks hard is the next in line to be superstar horses so i i'm gonna have to use i'm gonna use the one two five and six and and i i just i don't know how good brew house is i just don't have the confidence in doing real small here angela i don't know what you've got but i've got to go four deep to start to pick five yeah, I thought it was a little bit more contentious, I guess, in the boy side of things than the Vic Myers, but I really like She's My Warrior. And Kevin can attest to bread days, whether it's the preview day, whether it's festival. Pete Madsen has had excellent Minnesota bread days the last couple of years, and She's My Warrior is going to be his charge in here. She's My Warrior, I don't think, is as one-dimensional as maybe her form would show. I think that she can pass a horse or two. So if Brew House has to go out there, if somebody has to go with her, I think that She's My Warrior is capable of setting just a little bit off them. I'm kind of interested in It's Her Time to see how she develops as a horse, and maybe even not tomorrow, but further down the line. They put blinkers on her, and she kind of waits on horses, it seems like. Once she gets the lead, she's one of those that hasn't quite learned to run away from her competition yet. So if you ever see her kind of see the light bulb go on, she's going to be a force with these sprinters, including clickbait, including some of the best Minnesota breads out there. I think she's got a lot of talent, but she's still got some growing up to do. So I would say maybe those two at this juncture. I think the Gypsy Reward is going to be a little bit better going long, maybe in the long run, whether it be on turf or on the main track. I think that might end up being her game, maybe a little bit more ground than this would suit her. But she's my warrior is my top pick in there. And I don't, I wouldn't talk you off just about anyone in here. 
Uh, maybe I think I love you as a reach, but even then she's got some talent and if somehow she could shake loose, she could maybe hang on for a piece. All right. I know. I feel like I looked at She's My Warrior and I was like, I'm going to use my usual weakness of not really loving the class droppers. And that's kind of what I did. But I, I know that she was way in over her head last time. So this is a softer group for her. Um, moving on next on the turf for the Ralph Stranges Stakes going a seven and a half furlongs. Now we're doing three year olds and up Minnesota bred boys. And Again, with the buyer speed figures, I just go to King of Kids, the number two, because they see the progressively improving ones, and that's an angle that I really love. And this horse broke his maiden two back. He was going a mile. He did come right back to win an allowance race against winners. So then go, is second three back going the five furlongs at Hawthorne, which I really like showing some sort of uh, – consistency that he's always going to show up and run his race, even though his career has been short so far. And I do like the hints of versatility for this one as well, showing that he can handle different distances on the grass. Um, another one that I wanted to use was the four Toco Bay got back to the turf last time after two dirt attempts going a mile and 70 yards. I just don't think that this is this horse's game. He was a big price when he won the last out um, with 14 to one. And that was over devil vision who is back in this spot. Um, and then kind of the wild card to me was the seven, the alligator hunter, a first time turf horse. There's a little bit of turf pedigree um, with the second dam weeded out, having one on the grass, but not an overwhelming amount. And it's not as though overanalyzed. The sire has excellent turf stats with his progeny or excellent stats with his progeny whatsoever. Uh, but this one is an eight time winner. And I felt as though if, if this horse could translate some of that early speed could be a little bit dangerous in here. So um, I'll go to you first, Angela. How do you see this race? I didn't see a whole bunch of pace. So I figured that maybe a horse, like you mentioned, the alligator hunter, could get the kind of trip that he wants if he's going to try something new. I mean, you want him to be in the best possible position. And I think that he could sit right off the inside horse, Prince Rama, and maybe those two could slow things down. I see a lot of horses that want to sit just behind the pace or ones that want to come from the clouds. So him having a different sort of style and moving over to the turf, and I think that he's fine bread for it, but you can take sometimes it with a little bit of a grain of salt with Minnesota breads. It's not like, you know, they haven't proven at one point or another that they can do something or not do something. The breeding isn't as much a factor for me in a horse who's already done what he's, what he's accomplished in his career. But I thought that him being placed to the outside of that horse could put him at a tactical advantage. And I thought that he'd be a decent price because he's making that change to the turf and just goes back to Pete Madsen. He's the one that I'm going to hone in on for some of my plays uh, vertically. And I don't think that I can single him horizontally, but I respect your opinion on King of the Kids. I think the talent is definitely here. The upside is here with him as opposed to some of his more experienced season bows. And I'm going to be using Tuco Bay underneath. I know he ran an excellent race. He's had an excellent season. But for me in the past, uh, for gambling on him, it's worked out a little bit better looking for him to get an underneath piece as opposed to the top prize. Yeah, you know what, Ange? I don't know Gator Hunter. It's one of my favorite horses. I just don't see the turf. I, uh, I'm i going to try to buck Pete Metzen and that horse this time around. I'm with Sarah on the fact that there just isn't a lot of grass there, and I think there's enough quality. I'm going to try to, I think, take a a stand against a horse that's going to be much lower than that 9-2 to two morning line. I think King of the is a must-use. I get it. This is the last two for six furlongs. They went 109 and 109 and change for a closer that's uh, – just like getting set up at the buffet. But, uh, you know, Tuco Bay in good form. Uh, he's going to get a good trip again. My sneaky horse here is the six. I'm going to actually make a win bet on this horse. He'll be a part of my pick five ticket. And that's always the light. Uh, Tony Rengsdorf is a trainer that's starting to heat a couple of wins already this week. I don't a really tough goal of it there, grass, but I really think the setup here is going to be spectacular. If the one and seven go, which I think on paper, they look like the speed. I think Zoe is going to get that perfect third spot in line, tracking and ready to roll at five or six to one. So I'm going to use two, four, and six, and I'm still deciding on uh, what to do with Kelsey Har and the three Devil Vision because the horse has always been a decent close. We just had a breakthrough win last time on the dirt. Uh, so I'm kind of on the fence on the three, but ATIC will have two, four, and six here, ladies. All right. Uh, the last stakes of the evening, the Minnesota Turf Distaff Stakes. Now that you have the Phillies and Mares going the seven and a half on the turf. And I'm going to let you start with this one, Kevin, because uh, this race looked pretty tricky to me, and I want to hear your opinions first. 
I think fans are going to want to hear uh, picking the race is going to be the nine cent of success for Mac Robertson. Uh, it's, it's Rye Eckleberry, the town, one of our longtime uh, hockey's uh, at Canterbury. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's a terrific rider, and the fact that he's here and gets on this horse is newsworthy to me. To win, and and I think Sentes has the quality to beat a field like this. Yes, yes, the horse did get beat by Let's Get That horse that's in this race uh, tomorrow night and have the greatest trips. If you go back and watch the replay, there was a late and wait in between horses and kind of got stuck inside and, and that'll kind of had the, the run of the race there at, at low odds. Let's get that a must use Joel Byrne and Luis Fuentes together over 40% uh, win rate on our turf. So there's no way I'm, I'm not going to have the five. And then it just comes down to how much you want to spend because clickbait, a horse we've referenced already, uh, super speedy, super talented. And I think good enough to cross that talent over from, from dirt to turf is a, a contender in this race. The 11 horse is ready to run away. Who's, banked over half a million dollars and I think has the quality to win a race like this even from a bad post midnight current the other Joel Burnt horse four starts on our turf with three wins so so most tickets I put together are going to probably go five deep but if I did down uh, my top two horses are the nine cent of success who's eight to one and the five five let's get at who's nine to two all right great I have a question for you okay who do you think do you think that Mac is actually going to run all three of them, clickbait, uh, scent of success, and ready to run away? I didn't see him keeping all three in, and this is part of the puzzle. If, who do you think stays, and who do you think does not run? I wouldn't be surprised if clickbait comes out. I'm with you. Clickbait is so, so good on dirt. If there is a scratch to be had, it might be that horse. And that's something I kind of follow up with tomorrow, early afternoon, when Saratoga is rolling with as quick as we can. But, yeah, you have to kind of read before play that guessing game. If I had to guess, that's the horse that comes. That was just my guess. I mean, maybe they run her. They don't have other spots with her. But Loth and Bach and Burton have had such a good meet on the turf. I Actually, I like Midnight Current a little bit more than I like Let's Skedaddle. I think she'll be – I think that she's made the most strides forward in the last year. Let's Skedaddle came up. They knew she was a good one. They knew that she was quality – And she's shown that on our turf course since. I think Midnight Current's been a little bit more of a surprise for them. I like Karen Hernandez in the saddle on her. And I don't mind the draw on the inside. And she's a big girl. She might need to be a little bit further outside. But I don't think she'll be too far off it at any point. And I think you'll get at least twice the price with her than you will on her stable mate. I don't think that they're that far apart as far as the talent quotient goes. And I lean the way of Midnight Current. But these two might be kind of my centers for any tickets that I make. They've just... They've been so, so good picking their spots with turf horses, and these two are two of the best in this bunch. So now, do both of you feel as though, let's say clickbait comes out, that rush hour traffic is alone up front, or no? Let's get that. It's pretty fast. I don't think ready right? to run away lets her get away. Yeah, that, I think the 11 and, and the natural speed to keep that one company, they're not going to give the race to her. And let's Let's face it, we don't know for sure the clickbait comes out either, but I, I think the pace on us. Yeah, I would agree with that. And that kind of gives one more horse, then we can move on. Um, come on, Sweet Pea on the inside. A little bit of an underneath sort of chance. She's a real grindy sort. She doesn't have that turn of foot. She'll just keep coming and coming and coming at you. So if Zeke Lara can find a clear way on the outside, she'll usually come for a piece. I don't know if she's good enough to beat these, but she'd be one that you could factor in for your vertical plays. Nice. All right. Well, I went to Scent of Success like Kevin did. And when you mentioned that one as your top pick, I felt a little bit better about it. So um, the thing with this horse, though, I feel like if you just look at the Princess Elaine last year where uh, Rush Hour Traffic and Ready to Run Away both beat her, I feel like she was a little bit closer to that pace than maybe she was wanting to be and she kind of just got cooked by horses that were better than her at that time then she comes back first off the layoff and gets Rye Eckleberry in the saddle for the first time and I felt like I saw a much more relaxed horse that was willing to kindly rate on the inside a little bit more than she had before and that was a better trip for her and a better outcome then had to go a little bit um a little bit stuck behind horses, had to wait a little bit, and then uh, Let's Get Addle just got the jump on her and then was drifting out a little in the stretch, and I don't think she was ever getting by. But that was first off the bench, and now she gets this rider back for the second time, and I'm just going on the idea that maybe she's a better horse as a four-year-old and is a little bit willing to listen to the rider more and gets a better trip in here than she did 
last year, but rush hour traffic is the speed. I am always nervous about who's going to be in front, especially after watching so many turf races in New York. And I know that you have both been paying attention to what happens in New York and you're like, yikes, it's so glacial. <laughs> you have to go with the horse that's going to be sitting the 24 and 50. I don't see that happening in this race, but I want to at least include somewhere on a ticket, if not the main ticket, just because I'm always afraid of speed on the grass. Um, but I like Midnight Current and Let's Skedaddle as well. If I like Scent of Success, I have to like the horse that beat her. Um, and then Midnight Current, just a model of consistency so far. So I would go 9, 4, 5, and 10 on my ticket in here. Uh, and then stakes action is over, and you have $4,000 claimers in the next. Uh, now we're back to dirt, uh, six and a half furlongs. Um Hard to really trust anybody, but I look at this race as the two doesn't like to win is only three for 56 and has some early speed. And I feel like we'll keep the seven company Herbie. Um, so I went just with Freeberg, the three who's an 11 time winner. So at least likes to win, even though I don't love that the buyer speed figures are trending in a negative direction. Um, and then the six Martin just has the late pace rating of the group. So if there's some speed early, I just went to these two. So nothing super creative for me in this race, but how did you guys see it? Yeah. <laughs> We're in Minnesota, right? Yeah. Yeah. You're yeah. ladies first. I'm a gentleman, if nothing else. I, what's that? I'm a gentleman. Ladies first. Oh, yes. Yes. I know that. <laughs> just ask anybody. Okay. Martin. Uh, Martin is probably going to end up being my top pick in here. Uh, Crystal Connie seems to get along with him very well, but uh, oh, I'm glad that it's six and a half. I'm probably maybe going to stand against Freeberg. He kind of had a, a I don't want to say perfect trip, but he had a very good trip sitting in the second flight last time. Kind of just made a lazy chase, kind of just mm, ambled along. He didn't look quite the same to me as he had in some of his replays at Turf Paradise, but a horse that I'm going to throw in, and he would take, Quite the effort from him, but El Centenario outside benefit from that switch. Last time he tried to rally up the inside, there wasn't too much room for him. Maybe getting to the outside, not having as much pace to run down. I mean, if he doesn't put himself too far behind, less to do with a stretch, he could add some spice into there. And I mean, Troy Bethke pulled it upside yesterday at 45 to 1. And he also won with another horse that was 2 to 1. So if he's having a good weekend, maybe I dread jump on board and add El Centenario to my tickets. I know that it's a reach, but I think he, Fender Bender, and Martin would probably cover it for me. Fender Bender can come up with a big race here every once in a while, but like you said, you can't count on these to be consistent each time. And every so often in kind of a slower paced race like this, Fender Bender will come up with a big one. So I would probably throw him in too. I, I think Angela's on the right track here. I, I'm bullish on Martin. I think there'll be a, a few of my kits that single the six here uh, with Crystal Con. Horses like Rusty K and Seek and Justice, who this horse ran behind last time, are just at the top of these $4,000 claimers. They can jump up and face $7,500 claimers, even $10,000 claimers. So I, I give that race a little more credence. And then I also think Troy Bethke's horse on the outside is going to get a, not only won that race last night at 45 to 1, kind of triggered a carryover. He also won a turf sprint. And when Troy Bethke wins two races on a card, that's more than newsworthy because He's not Joel Burnt or Mac Robertson with all these horses and all these starters. And the barn is heating up, and he's always been a pretty streaky guy. He's one of the original trainers from back in the Downs days, Sarah, before you were born back in the 80s when I first started going to Canterbury. So I think the eight is super sneaky. I'm going to use the eight. I'm going to use the six. And then I agree with Sarah. You know, you look at you look at your admission who is probably going to get a great trip. But then you see three six, and I don't know what to do. Um, um, there's a guy named Dave Valento who's the I mean, uh, he's a terrific handle, but he's a Canterbury guy that lives in Texas. He's got the horse on top, and, and I probably have to use the horse there. I'm a big track phantom guy. So for me right now, it's two state, and then i got to make a choice. This is another race where I think if people are going to build licks that can hit, you have to go at least three or four deep. All right, I might have to toss in that outside horse for myself. But, yeah, I just can't take a three for 56 at less than – at any price, but especially at less than five to one. Um, 
And then another uh, really interesting race to close things out, maiden claimers, $5,000, three-year-olds and up going a mile. And I went four deep in here. This just seems like not the strongest group. Um, I went with Pirate Bird just because this one's lightly raced compared to others, so less chances to show that they're kind of this lifetime loser type. Um, and is dropping to the $5,000 tag for the first time, a third last time out, first off the bench. So maybe a little bit of upside with this one. Um, the five dropping from a 16,000, that's Calico Joe. I feel like this horse is kind of starting to pile up the chances, but third last time out to oh, Extreme VIP who did come back to win, and that was yesterday. Uh, guest check, the six is dropping from the $25,000 claiming level, has some seconds and thirds from nine starts. And then I don't love the nine leadoff, but I thought that that one maybe would be in front, um, though is over five so far. So I just kind of tossed the ones that had had a little bit too many chances at a similar type of level and just spread with the ones that could win. But I'm not really in love with anybody in here. It's the ones that I just went through and you just kind of no, no, no. Um, process of elimination led me just to a couple of them. <clears throat> Excuse me. Like you said, Pirate Bird, who scratched out of a different spot yesterday. And it's funny, one of the guys in the group comes up, he looks at the scratches and he goes, that's my horse. I didn't know it was scratched, but they had scratched it in lieu of this spot today. So we found that out right after he found out about the scratch. I think it's a better fit for him. He and Honey Superman are going to be my two keys in here. I don't love Calico Joe, but I might throw him in. I'm against Guest Chuck. Uh, Barry and Joni are two of the, only, the two of the nicest people and two of the most understanding people. If I say they have a slow horse on their hands, and they'll tell you that. I mean, they're just very honest about who they have, but they're giving him every chance to win, dropping into this spot. So, if he wins, if he beats me, I'll be happy for them. But I don't know what it will take for Guest Chuck to win. I just don't think it's exactly this field. I think Honey Superman is in kind of the driver's seat. Uh, watch lead off before the race. If you do like lead off, uh, he was bucking around in the paddock. He was being kind of a loony last time. So keep an eye on him. And if he behaves himself, he might have a chance in there too. Yeah, tough race to finish, ladies. Uh, <laughs> this is uh, this <laughs> your is thought. Nice. Well, it's a shame that it's going to come down to a maiden five thousand dollars race. But as a handicapper, you have to be good at all levels, right? You can't just Look at the steak it races. It can't be a whole card of no. Minnesota bread steaks. Um, That's later in the year. Right. A horse I'm going to make a case for here to try to get people paid is such a problem with so many of these horses. I, I will not use the five. I, I am, I'm just not going to play. Continues to get beat at low odds and, and gets beat by 18 lengths last time. I love Joel Burns and I, and I love Luis Fuentes. I'm not doing it. Um, but you... Take a look at this three. Now, last time out, they tried the turf again. It's much better, and it was predictably ugly. I get that. Um, but you get a horse that is cart on the main track at Canterbury and got beat by Lee and a tearaway leader named the Z-Man. But now it's the second try on the dirt. And for horses at this level, I notice these workouts. Number one, the horse has been out there timed workout twice. And number two, to the workouts for this level or eye popping. So that last one, seven and change breezing uh, for this level gives me some cause for pause. B go time turf to dirt class need to stay close and a horse that I think will handle the distance. Three horse will be the key at really paid tomorrow. Unlike Angela, I don't know how they get around using the horse. I could never bet the horse for which the horse is probably going to be. But this horse has just faced better competition. And you know, it's state bred 25. Um, this is this is bottom of the barrel, and I think horse fits pretty well here. I mean, Superman, I don't know what to do with that horse. I, Ange, I if you didn't have that last race in the running line, I would say I, I'd go on Harry Hernandez and Honey Superman. This horse was just a non factor. And outside of North Arm Bay and back to selling, who's come back to be a beaten favorite again, I just I don't understand how the yeah, horse could lose by 45 lengths. I don't know what happened. So help me out there with Honey Superman. Other than that, I'm just going to use three and six. No, I just, I, from a pace standpoint, I'm just looking for somebody to be close to the lead. And I think that he will be in this spot just naturally by that class drop. So I think being to the outside and showing that speed, I, I won't take too short a number on him and I'm probably not going to bend a win, but I think that 
he can take these a lot further than anybody else who tries to go for the lead. And that's usually so dangerous in these low-level maiden claimers. Just whoever doesn't give themselves a lot to do late comes up the winner. But I respect your angle on the three, and I'll probably I'll throw him into stuff. You know, if I if I can knock somebody out a little bit earlier in the sequence with my pick or tickets, but I would definitely add him in, and I can see your case with him. Yeah, I mean, if the angle is I really hate everybody, I'd rather throw in a price. So <laughs> that's always a winning. Yeah, angle. the horse and the, the trainer. People aren't going to be familiar with Nevada Lipman. He's not unless you play candy basis. You're not going to know the name. He wins at prices, and he's the trainer owner on this one. And those two work are, are actually Sarah pretty newsworthy because you've got a five thousand dollar claimer with it. The trainer's paying an awful lot of attention to this horse, the turf to dirt get the route race under the belt, and I'll get back to the dirt with a horse that's probably more well-meant. I think the horse is super sneaky tomorrow, and I think the horse could really be the key uh, in this pick five to maybe some type of payoff here because there's going to be some chalk on the front end, which is okay when there's a carryover. I think we're going to have four, maybe $500,000 in this pool by the time it, the dust settles. You can swallow a little chalk early. Um, you can afford, I think, in this last race, use some goofballs like the three because you're going to want to have as many options as possible because this last I mean, oh boy, there are some horses in the uh, I'm using that I normally wouldn't sit or even looking at. So it's that guy. It's a five thousand dollar claimer at the back of a card, mind, and and hope that you're alive. Right. I mean, Ed said something recently to me that was actually a good piece of advice, and uh, it was that if you're looking to hit a major payoff, you are going to end up having to use horses that you just don't like. And I think sometimes we get so tied into, well, I have a strong opinion here or, you know, these are my thoughts here. And it's like, OK, if you actually want a chance at hitting one of these big payoffs, you're going to have to get on board with some of these price horses that maybe you don't have in your top or second or even third choice uh, options as well. And in a five thousand dollar maiden claiming race, that's the type of race where you would probably want to throw in some horses that don't really jump off the page. I think that it's easier to make cases for like 20 to one shot at Saratoga than it is to make cases for 20 to one shots here, but both are necessary for big payoffs. So very much to your point. Yeah. You have to let go of a lot of the things that you hate about horses and maybe cling to the ones that you like about the long shots and use them. All right. Well, thank you both for taking the time to talk through the sequence with me. I'm excited to uh, hear your thoughts live on the air tomorrow for that big pick five carryover with a low 10% takeout. And before we go, any undercard thoughts before we get to the pick five sequence uh, for people to build their pick five bankrolls or not really yet? Nothing strong yet. You have to stay tuned. I I mean, we'll give out the, the advice for the pick five, but you got to tune in. You got to get all those paddock thoughts from Kevin and the very few studio thoughts from me on the undercard. Mm, that's a secret. Kevin, I'll, I'll give you one horse. On. Yeah, I'll give you a sneak peek. Race four is a turf race. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and I love turf racing at Canterbury. And, and we mentioned Pete Matson a couple uh, on the show here. And Ben's Malice is a horse that ran on our big day back on June the 22nd at the Stars Turf Festival. And, Got beat by a, a Flan Drew horse that got loose on the lead. This is a big, strong horse that loves our turf. Great pace. He's only going to be, I think, around three to one. The race four number this is a horse I'm going to build my bankroll with tomorrow, and I'll suggest that for the fans there maybe to jump on board so we can cash together. And, Angela, that's the one I was expecting you to mention. I know that you like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I tried not to be predictable. Oops. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> Yes, of course. Of course, I'm going to pick Ben's Malice. Big Ben. I don't think love Big Ben. Anywhere. <laughs> we love Big Ben around there. I have a picture of him somewhere around here that Pete gave me, but uh, he's a cool horse to follow. He's, I don't want to say a pet, but he's as uh, close to one as I'm getting with a, a Pete Matson horse because, I mean, some of them you can't always catch a price on. Horses like the Alligator Hunter, it's hard to find one. But with Ben in the Mystic Lake Derby, I was – I thought we had something coming for home, Kevin. We were watching that one live, and it looked good, but he just came up second best on the day. But he's still not tomorrow. Root for it. Tomorrow he wins, Sarah, pays about $8. And because he's a Minnesota bird, I know Angela thinks he's going to get bet, but a bulk of the money tomorrow night is going to be out of Minnesota. It's going to be out state. So price in there because there are some pretty decent turf horses in that race. So we'll look, and we'll build that bankroll up, and we'll crush that pick five. I can't wait. 
exciting stuff. And we know that the price on that horse is going to drop because everyone's going to watch this video, see that we all like him <laughs> and I'm going to make some board favorites there. But thank you both. Everybody can tune in to the two of you tomorrow on the Canterbury feed. Make sure you get involved with that pick five and all of the racing at Canterbury is wonderful, industry low takeout, very better friendly, and you both provide excellent analysis. So looking forward to hearing what you have to say tomorrow.